In this section we want to look at what are called double angle formulas and I've written them over here on the board. First of all, the sine of twice a, that's why it's called a double angle formula, the sine of 2a is always written 2 sine a cosine a. When it comes to cosine 2a, we have three formulas. The first is cosine squared a minus sine squared a, the second is 2 cosine squared a minus 1, and the third is 1 minus 2 sine squared a. So I've numbered these 1, 2, and 3 as the three different formulas for writing cosine 2a. Now the one that we use sort of depends on which one is the more convenient formula to use. The third formula I have for is for tangent 2a, and I've written 2 tangent a over 1 minus tangent squared a. So these are uh, the formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent of twice an angle. That's why we call them double angle formulas. Um, as with all the other identities and formulas we have, you should memorize them. Now we have some derivations in the book that show where these formulas have come from, but what I want to do uh, before we actually begin working problems here is to take the graphing calculator and see if we can't justify our first formula. So let's take a look at the graphing calculator. First of all, let's look at uh, the y variables that I have here. I've written for my first y variable um, sine 2x. My second y variable I've written 2 sine x because that's the most common mistake students make when they work with double angle formulas for sine 2x. They'll just factor that 2 out and write it in front. So I'm going to graph y equals sine 2x, y equals 2 sine x, and then down here I've got my formula written 2 sine x cosine x. So we expect, if these double angle formulas are correct, that the graph of y1 and the graph of y3 will coincide, and the graph of y sub 2 um, will be different than both of them. Let's look at the window I'm going to graph in. You can see x is going to go from 0 to 2 pi in increments of pi over 2. y is going to go from negative 3 to 3 in increments of 1. So let's take a look at the graph. There's y equals sine 2x. See, it's got a period of pi. It goes through two complete cycles in two pi units. There's my 2 sine x. It has an amplitude of 2 and a period of 2 pi. And you can't see anything happening from my third function. That's because it's retracing this first graph because the sine of 2x is the same as 2 sine x cosine x. So you, you can see that I can use the graphic cal graphing calculator to justify some of these formulas that I have. In any case, there's other derivations of them in the book. What we want to do now is see how we can use them to solve some problems. Here's our first one. Suppose sine a is negative 3 fifths, a belongs to quadrant 3, let's find the sine of 2a. Well, according to my formula, I know that the sine of 2a is 2 sine a cosine a. So that's the double angle formula for the sine of 2a. Well, I have sine of a, it's negative 3 fifths, I need the cosine of a. So um, I'll say 2 times negative 3 fifths. Now, if sine a is negative 3 fifths, cosine a is going to be 4 fifths. Since a belongs to quadrant 3, I know my cosine will be negative also. So I'll substitute for cosine a negative 4 fifths. Now, the rest is just arithmetic. Negative times negative is positive. I have 2 times 3 is 6 times 4 is 24. And in the denominator, 5 times 5 is 25. So if the sine of a is negative 3 fifths and a is in quadrant 3, then the sine of 2a is going to be 24 20 fifths. Now I arrive at that by doing a little uh, intermediate calculation to find the cosine of a. But I think you know by now, if the sine of a is 3 fifths, the cosine of a is going to be 4 fifths as far as the numerical value. The rest is just a matter of assigning the correct algebraic sign to them. Since a belongs to quadrant 3, I know that both sine a and cosine a are going to be negative. So I write down negative 3 fifths, negative 4 fifths. Okay, let's take a look at our second problem. Suppose tangent theta is 5 twelfths, theta is in quadrant 1, can we find cosecant 2 theta? Well, cosecant 2 theta is going to be 1 over sine 2 theta. And since sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta, again, all I need is the sine of theta and the cosine of theta, put it into this formula, and I'll have an expression for cosecant 2 theta. Now, if tangent theta is 5 twelfths, I know that tangent theta is th sine theta over cosine theta. Uh, so my sine theta is going to be 
5 over something and my cosine of theta is going to be 12 over something and I think from your experience with these Pythagorean triples you know it's going to be 5 thirteenths and 12 thirteenths. So sine theta is 5 thirteenths, cosine theta is 12 thirteenths, sine theta over cosine theta then will give me 5 twelfths. Since theta belongs to quadrant 1 I know sine, cosine, and tangent are all positive there. So I'll just continue 1 over 2 sine theta is 5 thirteenths, cosine theta is 12 thirteenths, so I end up with 1 over 2 times 5 is 10 times 12 is 120, divided by 13 times 13, which is 169, taking the reciprocal of that, that's going to be 169 divided by 120. So here's a problem in which I'm giving the tangent, given the tangent of an angle and I'm asked for the cosecant of twice that angle. So I go from cosecant to sine twice the angle, then I use my double angle formula, 2 sine theta cosine theta, substitute my values in using the fact that tangent theta is 5 twelfths means that sine and cosine of theta are 5 thirteenths and 12 thirteenths. The rest is just arithmetic, I get 169 over 120. Now these problems are just for practice to see if we can put our knowledge of trigonometry together with our new double angle formulas to solve a variety of problems. Mainly they're, just used, they're there just to get you used to working with the double angle formulas. Let's look at the next problem. Suppose cosecant t is square root 5, <clears throat> t is in quadrant 2, find secant 2t. Well I know that secant is 1 over cosine. So I'll write secant 2t as 1 over cosine 2t. Now with my cosine formula, I know I have three different forms I can use. One form involves both cosine t and sine t. A second form involves just cosine t. And a third form involves just sine t. So let's look and see what I'm given. Cosecant t is square root 5. That means that sine t must be 1 over square root 5. So I'm given the sine of t, let's use the cosine of 2t formula that involves only sine t. So 1 over 1 minus 2 sine squared t. So that's the double angle formula for cosine 2t written in terms of just sine, one of the three formulas I have available. 1 minus 2 times sine t squared, well that's going to be 1 over square root 5 squared, 1 fifth. So let's see what we've got. 1 over 1 minus 2 fifths. 1 minus 2 fifths is 3 fifths. That's 5 fifths minus 2 fifths is 3 fifths. 1 over 3 fifths is 5 thirds. So another variation on the problems that we've been working. Suppose cosecant of t is given, square root 5. Find the secant of 2t. Well, if cosecant is square root 5, sine is 1 over square root 5, secant is 1 over cosine 2t, I choose this formula because it's the one that involves only the sine function. And since I'm given the sine function, I'll substitute in. The rest is just arithmetic. Let's look at the next problem, which is a graphing problem. I want to graph y equals 6 cosine squared x minus 3 from x equals 0 to x equal 2 pi. So I'm going to take this formula right here, y equals... 6 cosine squared x minus 3, and I'm going to factor a 3 out. So I have 3 times 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Now I know from my double angle formulas, this is the expanded form right here of the cosine of 2x. I'll put back my coefficient 3. So here is the function that I want to graph, y equal 3 cosine 2x. Now I know that my amplitude is going to be 3, and my period will be 2 pi divided by 2, which is just pi. So I want to graph a cosine function with an amplitude of 3 and a period of pi. Let's take a look down here. So the amplitude is going to be 3, so it's going to start at 3 because it's a cosine curve. Then the period is going to be 2 pi divided by 2, which is just pi. So I have to go through one complete cycle between 0 and pi. So I'll go up here and mark that it's going to end up at 3, halfway between the two, it's going to be down at negative 3, and then it's going to go from 0 to 0. So there's one complete cycle. I check and see that I want my graph to go from 0 to 2 pi, so what I'm going to do is extend this graph now to go all the way to 2 pi. So it'll go from 0, from 1, down to 0, down to negative 1, back up to 0, and then up to 1 again. 
So my curve should look like this. So that's a pretty good sketch of the graph of y equals 6 cosine squared minus 3. Fairly complicated function here to graph, but if I use my double angle formula, I get it down to 3 cosine 2x. Then I notice I just have an amplitude of 3, a period of 2 pi divided by 2, so it's pretty simple to graph one complete cycle and then just extend it out to 2 pi. Let's look at the next problem. Simplify 1 minus 2 sine squared uh, 75 degrees. Okay, so this looks like the expanded form of uh, cosine of twice 75 degrees because I have that cosine of 2a formula is 1 minus 2 sine squared a. So in this case a is 75. I have 2 times 75. That's the cosine of 150 degrees. Now 150 degrees terminates in quadrant 2 so I know my cosine is negative. The reference angle to get back to the x-axis is 30 degrees. Cosine of 30 degrees is square root 3 over 2 if I want to do this problem with exact values. If I was going to use a calculator, of course, I could just do this on the calculator to begin with. But I wanted an exact value to simplify this down to square root 3 over 2. It's negative because cosine 150, 150 terminates in quadrant 2, so the cosine is negative. Let's look at one last problem, a, a, an identity. I want to prove that 2 cosecant 2x is tangent x plus cotangent x. I'm going to start with the more complicated side and just bring it over here. Tangent x plus cotangent x, I'm going to write everything in terms of sine and cosine. So I have sine x over cosine x plus cosine x over sine x. So I say I have two fractions to add. I need to add by finding a least common denominator. So I get the same denominators here. The least common denominator will be sine x cosine x. I'll multiply the first fraction by sine x over sine x. That's just the number 1. The second fraction by cosine x over cosine x. Okay, now in the numerator, I'm going to have sine times sine, which is sine squared, plus cosine times cosine, which is cosine squared, all divided by sine x cosine x. Now, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. 1 over sine x cosine x. Now my formula, my double angle formula, looks like this. The double angle formula that has sine x cosine x in it looks like this. The sine of 2a is 2 sine a cosine a. Well, if I have just this part, what I can do is divide both sides by 2 and get 1 half sine 2a is sine a cosine a. Just because that's what I'm looking at right here. I don't have the coefficient 2. Um, well, how about this? this? Here's another way to do it. I want this to look like that double angle formula, so I'm going to put a coefficient 2 in front of it. To make up for it, I'm going to put a coefficient 2 in the numerator, too. So I've really multiplied this fraction by 1, and now I have 2 over 2 sine x cosine x. That's the sine of 2x. 1 over sine 2x is whoops, is cosecant 2x. So I think I've succeeded in finding my left side here right, 2 cosecant 2x. So what I do is change to all sines and cosines. I got a couple of fractions I need to add by getting a common denominator. I multiply by the number 1. I end up with this. I have my Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared comes out to be 1. Then I notice in the denominator I have sine x cosine x. If I had 2 sine x cosine x, I'd have sine 2x which is the reciprocal, reciprocal of cosecant 2x. So to get this to come out to be sine 2x, I put a coefficient 2 there. To make up for it, I put a number 2 in the numerator. That's the same as multiplying this fraction by the number 1. I end up with exactly what I want, a 2 cosecant 2x. So there's a look at some of the problems that we can work using these new double angle formulas.